Coming up on Access ONU, are you voting in this year's presidential election? We'll have an in-depth discussion and we hit the streets to see what you think about our country's next commander-in-chief. Plus, we're shining the Access ONU spotlight on music ministry group Lifestyle. You're watching Access ONU. These are the stories impacting you on your campus. Access ONU. With a tense presidential election approaching, there are several key issues being debated before November. Joining me today is business professor Don Dakey and a senior political science and international business student, Elizabeth Lanham. Thank you for being here today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So tell me, um, before getting to, uh, before seeing these candidates this election, how much did you know about um, Clinton and Trump? Well, I know a lot about uh, Hillary Clinton because I'm of the age where I lived through the Clinton presidency, uh, Clinton's involvement, uh, Hillary's involvement uh, in health care and as first lady. Uh, with Trump, even though he had the apprentice program on, I rarely watched it. It was really more I was aware of his business dealings, building like Trump Tower in New York and in Chicago. I knew uh, about Hillary Clinton. Uh, just through like what my grandparents have told me and like when they talk about um, her campaign since I did not live through it. Um, but I knew Trump, I didn't really watch The Apprentice very often, but I knew about like his Trump Towers and um, the Trump Hotels and I knew about like what he was doing. And then in this election there's been a lot of charged rhetoric. Um, a lot of people have said as more so than uh, elections in the past. Uh, Professor Dakey, could you comment on, on that? What has it looked like in elections in the past versus now? Yeah, well, I think every election we hear it's going to be the worst, nastiest campaign ever. Um, this, is, this has risen to a pretty high level, particularly during the uh, Republican primary. Uh, Trump did things that uh, uh, we've never heard people do before as far as calling out people by names, and so it got real nasty. Um, I think he has moderated and from my perspective the campaign back and forth between uh, Mrs. Clinton and Mr. Trump is about the way you usually see it happening now. It's mm -hmm. kind of moderated to a pretty typical campaign. And Elizabeth, as a, as a young person then, how is it um, talking to your friends um, about these presidential candidates with, is it difficult to have these conversations about politics with it being so charged? Uh, yes, I would uh, say that it's difficult because uh, they only hear like media, media snippets of uh, what tr Trump and mm -hmm. Hillary are saying and then they base off what they think on issues and what they believe on them based off what they hear and um, they're not, and I believe that the charge rhetoric is t taking away from their main issues, like especially in the primary, it was taking away from what the issues were, and um, that really got in the way of a lot of my friends' perspective on who would be best for president. Mm -hmm. Now, both candidates have been accused of, you know, of lying, of being inconsistent. Um, how much do you trust the political candidates on this election? I think you really have to spend some time looking at what they're saying. Um, as Liz pointed out, if you look at the snippets, you're not going to really be able to tell what's doing. It's, it's very easy for people to talk about another candidate lying. Um, I'm not so sure that lying's going on. I think it's more shading the truth or taking the facts that you want, ignoring the facts that you want. Uh, maybe a form of lying is taking things out of context. And that happens so often on both sides. You take out a small phrase uh, and then you blow that out, but back in the original context, it wouldn't necessarily be a lie. And Elizabeth, then how do you, as a, as a young person, what do you turn to to try to see which candidate, or what the candidates are saying, what they believe? Um, well, to find out what they actually believe, I would I've been actually trying to read like different um, media, like um, like conservative leaning media and then liberal leaning media, but and then look at like their full context of what they're saying, 
And instead of saying, like, focusing on just what their words are, um, looking at who they are as a person and what they could actually bring to the office of president and not just, um, like, what they believe or, like, but the actual person they are if they're qualified. And from your perspective, what do you think would be the result of a Clinton or a Trump presidency? Well, um, a lot of people, I'm not sure Hillary Clinton would agree with this, that feels that... Um, a Clinton term would be a third term for Obama. And many of the policies I think she would continue to employ, but she would have some different ones too. Um, I think from a business perspective, what concerns me is um, more regulations. We've had so many regulations in the last eight years. She's not really addressed the issue, although I think she would of cutting corporate tax rates. Uh, that's been a big, big difference. I think Donald Trump would likely cut corporate uh, tax rates to maybe from 35 down to 15 or 20. His argument about business leaving this country, um, he acts as if he can stop them from doing it. He really can't. But I think that what Trump would have to do, and even I think Mrs. Clinton would consider lowering the corporate tax rate, uh, to try to get businesses to stay or to come back. And I think that's gonna be the big difference. Uh, the uh, advisors for um, uh, Mr. Trump, including Steve Moore, who's been on our campus twice, uh, has suggested that uh, we could have a growth rate between four and 5%. We've had a growth rate only one or 2%. If you can get a growth rate of 4%, you solve an awful lot of problems. And what about you, Elizabeth? What do you imagine um, presidency, you know, having President Trump or President Clinton? <clears throat> well, g graduating uh, pretty soon, I uh, would be looking forward to, for a president who could, like, bring up business and create an economy with, like, new jobs. And I feel that a, a Trump campaign, like, he's more on the business side of things. And he um, has had his hand in that more often and knows... Uh, and would benefit like my life more than a Hillary campaign would. Okay. Now, have either of you thought about um, any of the third party candidates? Gary Johnson with the Libertarian Party, Jill Stein with the Green Party, and what is your take on a third party vote? Well, I think both of them are Libertarian, which I think uh, uh, Libertarian would mean probably um, less government involvement and but that's in some ways troubling in terms of legalizing drugs um, and having more laissez-faire. Uh, I think we've already seen uh, in many ways society um, degrading and I think that uh, uh, they wouldn't cause it but they would let it happen and essentially I still think a vote for a third party candidate is kind of wasting your vote because they don't have a realistic chance of winning. Thank you both for being here today. We appreciate the dialogue. Thank you. Now we wanted to hear your opinion, so we hit the streets to hear what you had to say about the upcoming presidential election. I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for yet. This election this year is kind of a mess and the candidates are all very controversial and I'm waiting to see what happens with the debates. I think I'll be voting for Donald Trump. Um, and while I don't agree with all of his policies, there are just many policies that Hillary has that I disagree with more. Um, so it's kind of like a lose-lose situation, but if I had to vote for someone, I think I'd vote for Trump. I'm one of those people that's probably, probably going to vote for the third party candidate, um, simply because I can't side with either of the primary um, parties. So. I mean, if you can't support it, why vote for it kind of a thing. Hillary, because um, as far as like, I, okay, so I hate my reasoning behind this, except for I, there's a lot of things that I do feel like she can help with, like um, uh, the situation with like college students and uh, women, women's rights. Life Song is an outbound music ministry traveling team for ONU a group of student volunteers providing music for worship events, Sunday mornings, and retreats. Brandon Grossi joins us with one of LiveSong's leaders in today's Access ONU Spotlight. Brandon? Access ONU Spotlight. Thanks, I'm joined with Matthew Harnish here. He is one of the junior members of the band LifeSong. Uh, thanks for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. All right. 
Um, so tell me a little bit about what Lifesong is and its purpose here on campus. Lifesong is a traveling worship team. It is volunteer-based uh, out of Olivet Nazarene University, and we go around all of the Olivet region worshiping and fellowshipping with different churches, youth groups, and uh, even our peers here at Olivet. Cool. Um, how did you personally get involved, like, from the start? Uh, freshman year, I saw them during Festival of Ministries play during chapel, and they said they had a table, and I was heavily involved in worship at my church, and I decided I needed a band or a worship band to play in. So I said, hey, I will sign up for them. And then here I am now. I'm a leader. That's cool. Um, as a leader, were you, like, uh, appointed to that position, or did it just... Like, you're the oldest now? How did that work? Um, our prior leaders were seniors, and they were all graduating. So they had myself and a fellow member, Aaron Doherty, apply to be leaders. They interviewed us and said, hey, you guys are going to be co-leaders next year. So okay. we kind of took it and said, we'll run with it. And um, now it's growing. Awesome. Um, so what do you play in the band specifically? I am currently the uh, guitarist and vocalist, uh, lead vocals, and... Um, I go back and forth from drums, bass, stuff like that. All right, cool. Um, what are you most looking forward to in uh, the band this year? Uh, I really am looking forward to growing spiritually and um, relying on each other for prayer, for pretty much anything, whether it's study time or just jamming out and hanging out. You know, good fellowship, good spiritual growth, and just a lot of fun. All right, cool. Um, when you're traveling... Um, you travel to churches across the all of that area, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you ever play secular music for them, or is it specifically Christian music? Um, Church-wise, if it's a Sunday service, we stick with worship music just because that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But um, youth retreats are fun because we will play worship sets, and then sometimes the kids are like, hey, do you guys know any songs? And we're like, yeah, we know a few songs. And uh, we'll just break out into whether it's Royals by Lord or... We've done Hello by Adele, stuff like that. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, what's one of your favorite min memories in your ministry so far? Ooh. There's, a, there's been a lot of fun, a lot of pranking. Uh, one time we took Amy Beckberger's earmuffs and we put them on Craigslist. Oh. And we tried to sell them. And then she bought them back. Oh. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, how long have you been a member since your freshman year? Yes, my freshman year. Freshman year. All right. Um, thank you very much for being with me today, and uh, back to you in the studio. Thanks for joining us for the latest edition of Access ONU. Check back often to see the latest campus news, and if you have a story idea, you can email us at accessonu at olivet.edu. Also, check out Olivet's student newspaper, The Glimmerglass, at glimmerglass.olivet.edu. See you next time.